Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Zoom account and how to create a meeting. Fairly easy. Anyway, we're going to start by opening a new tab and we're going to type Zoom, Z-O-O-M. Uh, if I get ahead of you, uh, there's a pause button. Just click, just click your mouse, pause this video, and get caught up to me. So I type Zoom and I click the very first link. And it's going to bring you to this screen. The first time you come in, you're going to click sign up, it's free. After that, you're going to click sign in. Click sign up, it's free. I'm already signed up, so I'm going to get some funkiness happening. You want to click sign up, sign in with Google. And you want to do that so that Google just manages this whole thing and you don't have to deal with it. So click sign in with Google. And it's going to take you to a screen where you have to enter a little bit of information about reads. Um, it's going to automatically um, detect that we're a school and it's going to waive the 40 minute um, 40 minute meeting timer for free accounts. Anyway, it's going to bring you to this screen. And the first thing we want to do on this screen is mess with our settings. Uh, and the reason we want to do this is there's a reported problem where uh, students have been taking over screens during meetings. And so we want to, uh, we, first of all, we, we, we want to set some basic settings here. So we always want to host the video. Uh, we always want participants to have their video on. We always want it set for telephone and computer. Uh, we, al we always want to turn this on, join before host. That allows people to join and be in kind of a waiting room until the person who's hosting the meeting comes in. Um, do not use personal ID when scheduling meetings. It's just not necessary. Um, use personal ID when starting an instant meeting. I, I would leave that off. Um, require a password, I would turn that off. Um, embed password and meeting link, no. We don't, I, I wouldn't include these passwords. Um, I wouldn't include any of these passwords. Mute participants upon entry, this is very important. Um, when people are joining the meeting, they may have been fighting with their computer for the last 10 minutes, troubleshooting or having problems with their camera, and you don't want them to come into a meeting not be muted and hear them swearing. Uh, that's, so always mute participants upon entry, especially if you're having a meeting with a student or with a group of students. Mute participants on entry is very important. Uh, meeting reminders, that's up to you if you want to, uh, want to get a reminder from Zoom. Uh, I would allow chat. I would allow private chat depending on whether I'm dealing with kids or not. Um, play sound when participants enter or leave. Absolutely, you want a sound to play when participants join, okay? And it, you want everybody to hear it. Um, file transfer, leave it alone. It should be turned on. Uh, feedback, zip, 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 allow host to put attendee on hold. You may want to turn this on for things like IEP meetings if we start holding them on Zoom. Uh, always show meeting control bar, yes. Meeting control bar should always be on. Show Zoom windows during screen share. You don't. I would turn that off. When I'm doing a screen share, I share the whole screen. It just keeps it simple, and I'll I'll teach you about that separately. Um, who can share? This is very important. Um, who can share should be set to host only. That that will keep other people in the meeting from share from taking over the screen and doing something that that we don't want them doing. Um, in a case with older kids, they might try and show something inappropriate. So who can share should be set to host only. Um, disable desktop screen share for users disabled. So turn this on. Um, these other settings, I, breakout rooms are for very advanced users. Um, we'll, we may get into that in a separate video if we need to. Um, these other settings are not as important. Um, so they save the settings save as you're as you're making the changes. Okay, so um, those are our settings. Now we're going to go to meetings, and right now I don't have any meetings scheduled, so I'm going to click schedule a new meeting, and let's call this faculty meeting. Uh, faculty meeting. Actually, how about we will be having 
a faculty meeting. How about tomorrow? And so we're going to make this date tomorrow, the 19th. And what time do we want the faculty meeting? Well, let's have it at 10 a.m. So I'm going to scroll down here to 10. I'm going to change this guy to a.m. But notice that we have a problem right... Oh, good. It's on Eastern time. When you go in here the first time, it's going to be set up for Pacific time. And you're going to need to scroll down and find Eastern time. Um, recurring meetings are very powerful because they keep the same meeting ID number. So if you want to have a meeting with somebody every single day uh, at the same time, um, you'll have that same meeting ID number. And the meeting ID number, I'll, well, I'll show you that in a second. <laughs> Let's continue with this. Um, so make sure this is set up Eastern time. This is not a recurring meeting. It's only happening once. I would not require meeting passwords. And then here's where our settings have taken over. Host video is always on. Participant video is always on. And you want to make it kind of a rule that video is always on because people will sneak away and you'll be talking to nothing if the video isn't on. So I would, I would make that, you know, best practice is video is always on. Um, audio, all, I would always set this to both. This allows people to connect by telephone. Um, enable join before host, absolutely. Mute participants upon entry. I talked about that before. You want to have them muted when they come in because we don't want to hear personal stuff that's going on and they don't realize that their microphone is, is on. Enable waiting room, yes, absolutely. And now click save. So now here is the meeting we just created. Okay, we want to click Google Calendar and we want to automatically insert it on our calendar. So now we have this faculty meeting for tomorrow. Here it is right here, faculty meeting. Um, we want to, this is that meeting ID number, okay? 274-846-815, okay? And what's cool about that meeting ID number is that um, if people have the Zoom phone app, if they have like trouble getting connected or, or they don't want to connect with their computer, they can just type that number in at the very top here and they'll get right into the meeting on their phone. Um, so that, that number is really useful. Um, but here's your invitation URL. Okay, this is, the, this is the thing you would click to get to the meeting automatically. And so if you click copy the invitation, it's going to and click copy meeting invitation. Then you can go over here to your email and click compose. And then you can type East Grove Street and faculty meeting. And just insert there. My right mouse click paste. And they'll, uh, they'll get this whole thing in their email that includes this link. And when they click this link, if they don't already have Zoom installed on their computer, it will automatically install it. Okay. Now notice the meeting ID number is right here. So if they have the app on their phone, they can just type in that meeting ID number to get into the meeting on their phone. So I've pretty much shown you everything we need to see. I just wanted to show you one last thing. Sometimes when you come in here and you're just seeing these two buttons, your existing meetings are under my account, which is way over here on the right. Okay, And it, it ought, it'll bring you right in here. And here's your, here are your meetings, right under meetings. Okay, And this is where your meetings are. And this is how you start the meeting. You click right there, start. Uh, if you need to edit the meeting, you click right here. And now you can edit the meeting. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you at a Zoom meeting soon.